This is free. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, we're in. We're in. Oh, we've been going on for like five minutes. Oh, really? Three, two, one. Three, two, did one. I did I go and make a cup of tea or three, two, one? You should make a cup of tea now. Yeah. Three, two, one. We're not. It's been time anyway. Let's go. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? We well? Not bad. Not All bad. Right. Yeah, good. good. Are yeah. we have we started yet? Just yeah. about. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, to be fair, this is good because I need more content for when my my. Uh, intros get ruined again so yeah that's cool yeah we've started we've started let's just yeah. say that we've started uh so this week's topic is habitual <laughs> eating habitual eating now, like what is what does such a word mean so what is such a word habitual eating the way the way i what we what i want to talk about today is getting people to understand when they're eating when they're eating if they're hungry or eating if they're just eating out of habit or boredom or or whatever and i think that's really relevant to right now why is it relevant to right now why is it relevant to right now because uh, we're at home because we're at why, home why why i don't know why are you at home <laughs> i like it i like it here better <laughs> i like it here better than the gym what i do is i send my clients into the gym and i do zoom calls from here <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's that's the model i'm going to use going forward <laughs> you have a camera in the corner so they can see the entire room yeah they can't see me though they can't see I'm in you. bed yeah yeah and then, <laughs> then you just you know shout out and strike i wonder if that's a thing that can work ah, bend <laughs> those knees yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. have you yeah. ever have you ever have you ever used that as a teaching point in your life? Bend those knees. I actually have because you know when somebody tries to do that deadlift squat, well, when they push their bum out. Yeah, when they're doing they're knees. doing like they're pushing their arms back, doing like some sort of good morning. And I'm like, bend your knees. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Literally, just just bend them. Just yeah. bend. You know, you know how they like the the knee bends. You should do that. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. And then massive, yeah, yeah. I that, get it, you know. That's usually my cue for a back squat as well. Ben, uh, so you just go up to the bar and bend your knees. <laughs> <laughs> and then straighten them, yeah. Bend your knees and then unbend them. And then unbend them, yeah. Yeah, and keep, keep doing that. Yeah, <laughs> until 10. And, until and, 10, and, yeah. Until 10. <laughs> and count yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get started here, guys. So I, I, first, oh, it's fine. we're starting. <laughs> what time are we starting? What I'm, what I'm trying to do, what I'm really trying to do is eliminate the 10 minutes of waffle that we've but all three of us are doing at the start. Well, I, think, I, genuinely think, I genuinely think we're losing listeners because of this. You know, know, I don't know. How can we know? There's only like three. I don't know. Yeah, I know. If it goes down to two, then there'll be yeah. My mum still says it's good. So, I mean, no, that's your mum's so good. Thanks, Jack's mum. Thanks, Jack's mum. Yeah. That's great. My mum can't understand lip reading because her laptop hasn't got any um, audio, so she just watches it. She watches just us in the background. Well, just for her, then I'll start subtitling. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. Your everything. Just. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, yeah, we get a signer. We get a signer. Get to learn sign language. Right, man. Would you get back on top? Yeah, sorry. Do you yeah, honestly yeah. waste so much time? Oh, the what we do at the beginning is so irritating. <laughs> honestly. Okay. I think that's less than usual, though. Okay, first question. How do you know when someone is eating habitually or eating when they are hungry? What are the signs, people? What, are the, what, what, what sort of things do people do when they're eating habitually rather than eating when they actually need food? Put the, um, put the food in their mouth. They put the food in their mouth. Excellent point. I'm going to... I'm gonna ask you for maybe yeah. asking for maybe a couple more there. Yeah, well, wow, <laughs> yeah. and survey says ding ding ding. <laughs> when would it, when okay. would we? When would you yeah. when would you eat when you just out of boredom? It's cla- it's a classic, like it's a classic office worker type of diet. And I know I'm generalizing here, but office workers he, eat high energy foods when they do a very low energy job. Um and they eat because they're tired and they eat because they're lethargic and all these things but it's not usually the fact that they're actually hungry that's usually the last thing that's actually going on there how can you be hungry when you've had your breakfast you have your lunch and you have your dinner and in between those periods of time you're not actually burning any energy they create a deficit and make you hungry again so they're usually doing they start by having a little snack as a pick me up they bring their blood sugars up you know what i mean they have a little caffeine hit and then they have another little spike after lunch because their their blood sugars are on the floor and it just what happens is that they create these patterns of eating you know have you ever heard somebody say oh i can't you know i just can't get past three o'clock without having a snack Mm. what (laughs) it's impossible but you know in their mind they do these things because they do them at the start because they're filling a need or whatever because boredom sets in and then over time 
they enjoy doing these things. You know, there are people who only drink Coke and there's people who have to have X amount of cups of coffee and some people have to have a chocolate bar a day. But these are not things that you need. They're things that you have created out of energy deficits or lack of energy or lack of um, motivation for other things. Poor, and poor choices. Yeah, poor, poor choices, choices, but choices. then you're, you've done it so often and you, obviously these foods are really nice to eat. So yeah. we enjoy it. So then they become a habit and then you go to your day and 10 o'clock I have to have my croissant. Yeah. And 3 o'clock I have to have my packet of Haribo. You know, and these things, and then you, when you say to somebody stop, they're like, what? Anyway. Yeah, so they, they may have done it for a period of time out of, uh, yeah. it just came up, someone brings donuts in the office every Friday, someone does yeah. this, and, and then it gets to the point where that person may have stopped bringing the donuts in, but you still want donuts at that time. Yeah. Do, you think, do you think the body get kind of gets used to that and kind of try, starts to tell you that, oh, it's it's 11 time, time for a donut, you know, sort of thing, rather, rather than... So with that in mind, in your opinion, yeah, both of you, do you think that the... Um, understanding when some when an individual is hungry, people find it hard to understand when they're actually hungry then, or when they're actually full. Um, or is that is that a different? Does that fall under a different category? I think there are two there are two sort of columns you could use. There's that aspect where they don't realise they're hungry, which you could then link back to improper nutrition at meals prior. So with that three o'clock snack, for example, they're breakfast was suboptimal the lunch was suboptimal so they feel they need the snack because they're generally hungry and they feel they need that boost because they're tired and there's that aspect but then I think especially with habitual eating the main aspect is actually the habit of it so the, all the science that to do with building the habit and keeping it is to do with exactly what you just said where you said about the person bringing donuts in at 10 a.m that's an event and so your body associates what simon just said as well they taste good donuts taste good you get a good feeling of having the sugar having the little rush little dopamine hicks it's like oh donuts and then you go have them your body's like fuck yeah that was really tasty let's do that again and so the more it keeps happening anyway you know your body knows hmm, around this time we normally have a pretty big kick of feel good and if he keeps doing it and you keep taking the donuts, your body's going to want that more. And so that habit is then sustained and it continues. Um, and then you could argue that it potentially craves more of it. Yeah. Because it's a good feeling. So I think there's the side of where with eating, we're not feeling full and wanting to snack to keep the energy up. But then it's also the habit side where it's associated with events and that's where the eating comes in mainly i think is where the association with key events during the day that's why it's like the context is there which it is so it's like oh it's 10 a.m on a friday we normally have donuts i have a donut it's you know there's people have like put context and or putting a context on somebody's food and when they eat is a really good way to understand the habits that you create you know i'm yeah. stressed i eat some sugar yeah really happy i go for some lunch you know what i mean it's all these things and you'd be like all right then so why why is it then, and especially in um, food diaries, it's a really, really good thing. They put a context bracket beside it. So um, I had, you know, got up in the morning at toast, uh, toast and tea with marmalade for breakfast. And then the context is, uh, why did you have that? It would be, oh, I was too rushed to make some eggs and protein. All right. So then then you then can start being like, all right, so why are you so rushed? And you can get to the bottom of these things. But context is actually such a big thing there because, yeah. You can start to build up and being like, all right, so every time that you're stressed, it seems that you go for this. And every time that you're rushed, you seem to snack on that. Because um, those are the things that ultimately create that habit then in the long term. Because you do it enough, it becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. Habits don't happen by once, up, just happening once every month. Or So you, we've talked about the um, office worker, your office worker mm. who, who, and we've, we've, all, we've all trained people who work in offices and there, there's similar things that go on that aren't there in, in various different offices where there's a day where someone might bring in biscuits or cake or chocolate or, or whatever. Um, they might go for a Friday beer um, after work, whatever it might be. Are there any other times where you think people 
create these habits away from work you know i'm thinking evening times post dinner is that something that you guys come across quite a lot where people what do you think George? well I, th I i think that one of the things that i i've heard so much is they someone's had their dinner and at about eight nine o'clock they they get hungry hungry so they go and grab some cereal or maybe when they were kids, they used to have cereal in the evening if they if they got hungry. So now it get it, it, through their lives, it's got to a point that um, at, at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, regardless of what happens, it's like it's cereal time. So I think that's another another dangerous um, wine area. Yeah, wine as well. Wine. So yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I think yeah these these are things that that just become part of. I've yeah. had my dinner. I've had maybe a dessert. And then two hours later, yeah. you're not, you know, you're not really hungry. You don't really need yeah. that. that and you relay, relay that back to the context then. So the wine would be like, oh, I've had my dinner. I've done my day's work. The kids are relaxing. Oh, now my time to relax. Wine. Yeah. You know, yeah. Can't, the wine's associated with relax. All these things that build up. So you take the wine away. People don't know how to relax because they're used to being like, it's not the fact that they're getting steaming. It's just, I have a sip. Oh, shut down now. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's just shut down time, but yeah, it's definitely. But the evening stuff, like the people eat all the time, don't they? They they randomly eat in the daytime. They, there's random periods in the evenings where they they just get all of a sudden anytime they're bored, they would rather have a snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think I think this is this is this is really quite um an important point because us three work jobs where we're not sat at a desk for most of the day. Yeah, um, and every other personal trainer will, will experience this. They that will that will go four hours without eating, and then and have longer, a, a lunch, longer, longer at times. Absolutely, longer. yeah. And then and then and then we'll have a lunch break and then go another four hours without eating. I, I even as an example today, I still I'm looking at my lunch. It's there. I just prepared it, but I ate my breakfast this morning at quarter to six. Yeah, so such an early breakfast. And I haven't died yet. Yeah, yeah. Have you not? I got a little bit hungry, but like I should be absolutely starving. It's yeah. just recognizing and going back to what you said, it's recognizing the difference between being bored and just filling a need that you you think you might have to have food. Um, with actually sitting down and realizing that really you don't you don't actually need that food. Yeah, okay. So then we, we've got we've we've got danger sites between lunch and dinner, let's say. Mm. We uh, so I'm a danger site between breakfast and lunch, and then a danger site in the evening when when your time's your own. So what can we what can we suggest? um that will help people to you know break or change these habits are we trying to break the habits or are we trying to use the habits to our advantage and, and change them what do you think i think most part for the for the times where people reach for snacky things or the things they know they maybe shouldn't have when they are continually having that's where you need to break a habit but then it depends how your brain kind of works, I guess. For some people, the logic of that will make more sense. <laughs> okay, I need to stop having that 3 p.m. croissant and coffee every day to get me through the afternoon. Whereas some people might think in a different light, which will help them to be like, okay, that's my current habit. I need to change it for another habit. So something else. Instead of the 3 p.m. coffee and croissant, I'm going to have... 3 p.m. tea and I don't know, carrots and hummus, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. So there's that aspect where you've got to think about what's the best method for you and the way it works. But if you're trying to break a habit where you're trying to stop doing a bad thing, um, I don't know, have you guys read the book um, Atomic Habits by James Clear? I've read a bit of it, but I haven't finished it. No, I yeah. haven't read it. I might still yeah. start. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, in terms of advice from this podcast, I would say go read that book um cool because it's it's very good and it's very readable um but he comes up with four laws for each if you want to create a habit and four laws um, which kind of are the opposite of creating to then break a habit and he speaks about things like one of the best ways to stop a habit which is very classic like we mentioned you after dinner you have to go grab cereal to have the cereal because you've associated it feels good after dinner you need it you've done it many times simply make it really hard in order to get do that habit so for example if you don't have cereal in the house and you have to physically go to the shop to go get the cereal 
you're increasing your likelihood that that habit is going to stop because it's yeah. very hard to go do it. In the same way, I think he mentioned specifically in the book, if you're think, if you're playing too many video games, as soon as you're done playing the video game, and you know I need to do that less, unplug it all, put it in the cupboard. So if you want to go play it again, you have to really want to play it because yeah, you have to yeah. get out of the cupboard, set it up, and put it in. So simple things like that, which I think, again people overcomplicated with the things it's super simple don't have it in the house it's super hard to go get it it's super hard to perform that habit yeah you can still do it if you really want to but yeah but it's yeah. Lot- it'll highlight it'll highlight the fact that when you're like jesus i am really just driving like 10 yeah. to go and get a bar of chocolate yeah, that, right? yeah 100%. Like, yeah i like yeah. I, li- I like the idea of, 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 of that and i like the idea of, of changing someone's habit and like you said jack i think um understanding the person in front of you is is what's going to drive your decision um i also like um getting people to do an activity at those times you know so you know you get to an hour after your dinner and you you start to feel like you want that i that's when i tell people to do their um home mobilizations and foam rolling or whatever i've set them i was like do it then yeah because because um it will change, get, in, the, it will change it will, in the context though yeah, change, yeah, yeah. everything it's in there you're changing like all oh, right so this time happens now we do this and that, that and then that yeah so um it's likely just by the time you get to the end of that you're going to be like well that's 20 minutes later and you've thought about us yeah yeah so that's that's another tip that i would give people is do that's actually a technique he says it's like in the book that's a whole thing called stacking oh so so it's a whole thing so say you want to create a habit I think he used the example you want to, like, I think the very basic example he uses is this guy wanted to get fitter. So his habit that he created is like every morning when I make a cup of coffee, I'm going to do two push ups. I mean, terrible example because it's not the greatest thing to be doing, but that's it just defines the process of stacking. So you have one habit because if you think about it, everything we do is a habit. Yeah. You should get out of bed, you clean your teeth, habit, everything, everything, everything. So you just stack one habit you want to create on top of another that you do every day in order to build a good one. So yeah, you're already using <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, techniques. Awesome. Are you saying that I'm a genius? Is that what you're basically what's happening? Is that what you're uh, I mean <laughs> I, should, I should write a book. Is that what you're saying? It's pretty genius. slow, so it's probably <laughs> came across more. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we also um go back to you as well when you're saying like noticing when you're hungry, that's like there's just so many things you could do about that. There's so many cues that you could go about that. But I think the most important thing is to just realize that you vet food. Do you know what I mean? You vet food and you're going to have a lunchtime. You don't need meals in between it. You could be like, oh, I want to do this. You could drink water. You could do all that. But the habit's not going to go away if you keep giving in all the time. You've got to realize that like, if you've had food and it's been two hours since you had your dinner and you're feeling hungry again, you're not actually hungry. Are you? Yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. be because that meal itself will take hours and hours to digest. Like You haven't had the food yet from that meal within two hours. It's still drip feeding into your system, supplying your body all the time. It's having to break down. So it's, it's recognizing that you have had a meal. I don't need any more. It's being consciously aware of that and making that then choice to be like, all right, cool. Uh, I'll eat again in an hour, three hours or so, because that's when I'll need food. And you no, know, if fasting is actually quite, I know not everybody's a big fan of that, but fasting is actually quite a good um, way to really tell or establish what true hunger is for people. Cause people don't know what true hunger is. Can't yeah. being overweight, and, and saying you're hungry is it doesn't always go on hand in hand because usually there's a lot of food that's coming in and it's usually a lot of carbohydrates, snacky foods. It's just up and down and up and down, but you're not truly hungry. Yeah, so it's a mixture of poor energy levels, perhaps. Poor energy and, levels, yeah. And habits that have been formed yeah. that at two o'clock I'm hungry, at four o'clock yeah. I'm hungry, at six o'clock I'm... Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, the, that's, that's it. And the jobs that people are in, and I know I keep saying the office worker, but like if you don't like your job and you're in a very boring job and you're trying to get through the day and you're doing stuff you just don't like doing, don't expect to be full of energy and excited the whole day. Okay. And it's not and it's not tiredness and it's not the lack of nutrients. Um, it might be the lack of nutrients. It's not the lack of food that's making you feel lethargic and tired there and then. It's the fact that you probably hate your job. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I don't get tired. 
It's and I can guarantee as soon as I start doing my uh, accounts, I'm tired. I'm tired straight like, away. Immediately tired. Straight away. Honestly, um, I, 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 man, like I was at the I was on Zoom calls for I think about eight hours straight yesterday, and but at the end of the day and into this morning, my back was hurting. By the end of the day, you know, I I was. I was so much more tired than I am when I'm in the gym, putting weights away, picking weights up, putting it back, you know, I'm talking to different people, not stopping moving basically. And yeah. often, as you know, I walk to work and I walk back. So all I was thinking about yesterday was, oh, I wonder, should I go and get a biscuit? Hmm. You know, like there's the, my house is there. Should I just go in and, and get a biscuit? And this is what, this is what, um, obviously I, I ate the whole biscuit tin. No, I didn't. I, I resisted. But um, th- your point is absolutely right. That if, if, if it's a job that's A, boring, and B, in one place, yeah, just here, um, the likeness of going, of your mind wandering and going, oh, yeah, there's the donuts that, that, that Jack bought in. I'll just go and have, go and have some of them. So, um, and, and now that we're in lockdown, so just same subject but just changing the, the situation slightly is there any tips you can give because this must be happening so much now for people who are on furlough for people who are working at home who haven't got eyes on them bosses eyes on them uh, di- directly on them while they're working they could go they could go and get a snack every 20 minutes if they wanted to yeah same sort of tips are you, are you, are you or is there anything else that people can do um while at home plan yeah. planning that's a good that's, yeah great plan shot. just seems to be like plan you know i still treat furlough time like work you know i'm still making lunches at the weekend and stuff like that i know it's sad but it's just it will take me a cup time out of my day and it will it will give me structure because i'm like all right so somewhere in the middle of this day i'll eat lunch at 12 um i'll make sure i have the same breakfast and then i'll have my dinner so i'm planning the day out so it means that anything that goes on in between that's just me overeating you know that's yeah. just me losing it so planning out what your meals are is such a good way to, to go about it and it takes no time at all if you uh, me and me and uh, georgia we do it quite often now is we'll buy all our food we don't pre-plan we'll buy all our food and then we'll sit there and be like right what meals can we make out of this mm. you know or write down our lunches and dinners for the week yeah and then we it's, stick in that pattern and we get our breakfast sort of only thing that can change or minute beat it there but it, it makes such a difference Mm. yeah yeah and i think you can go even further than that is 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 planning your meals also planning your day you know planning what you're going to do that day because uh, you know so many people must be kind of sat at home and getting through hours of of netflix series after netflix series and gaming or whatever you're into and that you know that's another you know point in in the day where you're going to start thinking well what goes with netflix yeah these biscuits and these crisps yeah at the end of the day, you know, that wine that they might have on a, on a, on a Saturday might become a wine every day. That wine, that one wine they have every night might become two or three because, Hey, I don't have to get up till 11 o'clock tomorrow. Mm. So I think planning the whole day, you know, maybe even going, getting up and doing a, a walk or a workout or a run or whatever first thing in the morning and then set yourself some tasks for that day around your, your, your food preparation. Then you've got a whole day. Well, you've got four hours worth at least there of, of something that you're keeping yourself occupied with. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, tell people what, what to do with their furlough time or anything. But if you are looking to create better habits nutritionally, these are the things that, that you might have to consider doing. Um, any more on top of that? Any more points on top of that, guys? Yeah, I think... If there's a particular habit that you keep doing that you know is bad, I think telling someone or having like a buddy partner involved in it and be like, look, I need to, if it's in your office, still go into the office. If you're doing whatever you need to do, if you live on your own message, someone be like, look, I keep having three boxes of cereal after dinner. It's a nightmare. If you tell someone about that, if you tell someone the simple act of telling someone and pointing out the bad habit in its own can be quite powerful. And having that someone who you're accountable for, it's like, if they mess you, be like, mm, it's nine o'clock, you having that cereal and you are, you're like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Or, or they message you and you're not having the cereal. 
then you kind of make it satisfying. So you're like, no, I'm no, not happy. Yeah. And then you feel good about it. So yeah. those sort of things for like specific habits. Um, yeah. Have an accountability basically, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And then in the same way you can do it if you want to create a new habit, you're like, oh, I need to do my homework that George sets me more. I suck at doing it. Then in the same way, have a partner that keeps you accountable. One, you've got George, but then also another person. Be like, look, I need to do my homework. Person you live with, be like, done your homework? I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah. So do it. That thing I think would be huge. Um, and then same thing if you want to create a habit make it really attractive and satisfying to do so the good thing and then make the bad habit really unsatisfying yeah um so it doesn't doesn't make you feel good because you realize that it's a bad thing so somehow yeah make it in a way that you're like oh, i fucked up i'm gonna let george down so having that accountability partner again can make it unsatisfying she's like oh, i've let i've let my husband down so i haven't done my homework or whatever it is um, yeah those sort of things specifically, I think. Yeah. And do you think um, setting yourself um, so many people who I'm, who I'm, I'm talking to at the moment have, have kind of put their, their goals on hold a little, and I'm trying to enc encourage as much people as I can not to put their goals on hold because actually this isn't a six, a four week lockdown. It's more like a four month lockdown. Mm. So um, do you think even in lockdown conditions, setting yourself, fitness goals um weight loss goals that sort of thing is that is that advisable at this time yeah absolutely i don't know about, don't know about you guys but there's there's like two sides to it there are people that either are like no keep going and smashing your goals change them to what you need to be able to do to adapt it to the situation but then there's like the other side of the camp that are like oh it's okay to sack everything off and chill yeah, out a little bit life do anything which yeah okay fair enough that might be right for you i'm not here to say one's right or the other but i just feel like having zero things to work towards or progressive like, for, for me it'd be a nightmare just to be like oh just down tools and not do anything yeah, yeah. now uh, now is like a time in in our life that we'll probably never ever get a game no. yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you can, there's so much you could do with this type of time. If you're in a job, like we said, that you absolutely hate, you could retrain and then yeah, take the time that we've had in oh, yeah. lockdown and learn a new skill in order to change that job. If you've always wanted to lose weight, but you've really struggled with the food side of it and all that because you keep going out at the weekends, you keep having loads of drinks. Now is the time they try and master, um, you know, taking those foods away getting in, in control of your portions, weighing up your food, they start off with and actually just figure out what the hell a portion looks like. There's Because there's more time at home, it's easier to eat and control the food that we have, unlike going out to work and getting your lunches and then going for socials and so on. So you're definitely right there. You can either sit there and just put your entire life on hold and not develop in the, light, in the four months or the eight months now that we'll be in lockdown, or you can choose to move forward and really learn stuff about yourself and make small changes, but in this type of period, massive, massive differences in the long run. Um, question is slightly off topic, on and off, on but off topic. Um, on what we were saying just there, I've heard, I've seen a lot of posts and heard a lot of people talk about why it's not a good idea to, for people to be thinking about a calorie deficit while a we're in lockdown and b. Uh, we've got a, a potentially dangerous virus that's, um, I shouldn't say potentially dangerous, should I? It's, it's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> a no, virus. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. You know, it's slightly worrying. Like it's <laughs> only, only so much so that every country in the world has shut Not, down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a, 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 let me just say virus. I can't bring myself to saying dangerous. A, a virus around that could, that could kill you. Um, that's worse. That's way worse. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Okay, cut. Let's start that all over again. So, some people are saying that it's not advisable for people to be in a calorie deficit while this is all going on. Um, what do you guys think of that? I, I, I'm, I'm on the fence with that um, because if you're really overweight, you're not healthy and, and you definitely, definitely, definitely are going to suffer um, if you get COVID a lot more than somebody who's in shape so i would say a calorie deficit from that standpoint is actually quite a good idea but a small calorie deficit right. 
and a huge emphasis on the nutrients that you're getting is the is the way forward here get your vitamin d make sure you're getting all the rest of your vitamins and minerals make sure you're feeding your body with good healthy fibers lean proteins and a small calorie deficit so you're again we're eight months in lockdown here at the end of march eight months with a 200 calorie deficit it's so many calories like yeah. that is a dramatic change in and you body. you have the time don't you to yeah. dramatically yeah. dramatically change your output for that period of time that's it. That's it. Um, so you don't necessarily have to bring your food intake drastically low to, to, yeah. to go walk that man. change go out and get get some fresh air and you know that's massively good for you so yeah i think the 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 weight loss um the health benefits it will have for someone who is overweight outweigh the fact that there's a, a, yeah yeah so but weight loss and good nutrients you know what i mean good, yeah make so sure with, you're getting some decent vitamins yeah the minerals in there make sure you're feeding your body with so you food. can you can use the um vitamins and minerals uh, so the, the, let's say the vitamin d supplementation for example that could be a point in your day as well you gotta have my breakfast here at this point i'll have a cup of tea a glass of water and, and my my vitamin d or whatever mm -hmm. You know, so that's another positive habit that you can have. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so it's, a, yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm the same as you with that. I think I think if you're overweight and you're, you're wanting to lose weight, um, waiting until the end of a lockdown is just not a good idea, in my opinion. If, if, you're, if you're ready to do it now and your motivation is high, then, then strike now, because when you start losing weight, your motivation will... Will, will continue to stay stay high at that point and more likely to succeed and hopefully then you would have created really good habits for when you when, when we come out of this when we go back to normal life because that's essentially what we what's going to happen we're, we're going to create a load of habits while we're in lockdown and i'm an example of this remember how many coffees i was having after the first mm. lockdown simon was well, i think i was on like eight a day yeah um yeah honestly so what i was doing jack my my, my zoom calls are roughly 55 50 to 55 minutes and my conservatory is right next to my kitchen. So I poke my head round Sally and I tell her just to flick the kettle on, you know, and in, in between each zoom call, I'd run in and make myself, it wasn't quite like that. It was more like, I, was, I was more on my knees, just begging. <laughs> so I'd run in and make a coffee. Of course, what I do is I do that most hours up until about two o'clock. So I got to work after lockdown in, in the summer. And what was I doing, Simon? Every, every after every client i was having a coffee in my hand yeah. you know yeah. and, and this is a habit this is a bad habit i've stopped it now this was a bad habit i created from lockdown yeah. so if you if you create the habit that's a, a habit that's bad in lockdown, you're going to carry that on if you create a habit of um within lockdown where you're eating too much at certain points in the day like we discussed earlier it doesn't matter if you're at home or if you're out out at home if you've created a habit that at 11 o'clock you have a load of donuts or you have a load of biscuits with your tea you're going to get to 11 o'clock and go, do you know what I fancy? And you're going to do it for a bit like I did. So it makes sense that if we start to introduce positive habits, like you guys have uh, spoken about just there, that you're likely going to carry those on to some degree when you go out uh, into the real world, especially if you've, if you've got results, especially if you've lost a stone um, in the lockdown. Sorry, Jack. Yeah. No, no, um, not at all. Especially if the habit you have like a coffee is easily repeatable in a different environment. So one of the ways to break a bad habit is to completely change the environment. So kind of, this, one, none of the point I made earlier where if you take the TV out of the room because you want to watch less TV, you've changed your environment. But something like a coffee- Yeah, it's not, it doesn't have to be as drastic as being like, I'm moving house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that yeah. environment is terrible. No, 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 no. It's the things that you're doing inside that yeah. which is an environment. So. It's just changing the things that you do in there will change the environment. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. But it's also, I think, with certain habits, if it's something you only ever do in your house, it could, if it's something as simple as, yeah, making, sure a, I understand. making a coffee, Siri, <laughs> make, you can go do that anywhere. Um, but it's just because it made me think there was a story about the, in the Vietnam War, all the, soldiers and everything got um addicted to um meth was it meth heroin heroin that's it got all got addicted to heroin obviously because it was there it was available it was bored something to do when they came back i think when they came back to the state 
they did a study on all the soldiers. None of them continued it. On well, zero? Uh, not zero, but like a very high percentage of people, because the environment completely changed, the addiction went. Wow. Yeah. So environment and where you are, and how you set it up. So it mm. touches on what you both mentioned earlier with meal prepping, having your fridge set, your environment in the fridge. If it's set up with a system, yeah. Where you've meal prepped, you've got your system in place. We you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, bing, bing, bing. You've made it one, made it really easy for yourself to create that new habit. You don't have the bad habit around you because you've changed the environment, I guess, in your fridge where you've only got the good things you need. And you have the system in place where Sunday, Saturday, you go with your partner, do everything, you buy the food, you make the meals that you want for the week. You've got your system in place that all of that combines to then create the best habit placing that's, that's, that's a really good point jack i think because you're right going from lockdown environment when you either don't have to go to work or you work in your own time it's not the same is it as being out there it's a more structured so if you that whole weekend prep for the week if you can do that within a lockdown situation that's yeah. more likely to to be passed on then i'm going to make my meals as i go because actually when it comes to outside yeah. world, that's not going to happen because you're back in your working environment. Yeah. So that's a, all about, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about a system. So it's not food related, but I know on Monday afternoons, I literally in my diary is life admin. So Monday afternoons, I come home, I do my washing. I know Monday afternoons, that's when I'm doing my laundry. I'm cleaning the flat and doing my bedroom. Then I know I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the week. Yeah. You have to think about all all that laundry's there. Oh, I should probably do that, do that in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Wait for it tomorrow. It's like it doesn't matter. I'm doing it Monday. I know that's when it's happening. It's set in stone. Bish bash bosh done. That's a stress yeah. away as well. We talked about oh, yeah, stress yeah. and eating. If you can take as much stress away from yourself as you can, that's that's yeah. that's something frees that up so much time. Then you're just like, oh, it's quite a bit of laundry there. I should probably do that. And it's yeah, like, and then you don't want to do it. There's like dishes pile up, and you're like, oh, that's like a big mess. If you wash it straight away, it'd be gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that system. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But I have a question to flip on to you two. We mentioned, well, both both I think all of us mentioned earlier about where people feel hungry, maybe because of a lack of optimal nutrition from meals prior or during the day what are we probably touched on this before what key things people make mistakes on with their nutrition that in enhances the likelihood of those bad habits and snacking coming in okay so i think simon even mentioned it one of the things earlier i think um food choice um is 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 one so if you start your day with uh nutella on toast um, what what that's going to do to your to your blood? I mean, it's delicious, I, I would add. But what it's going to do to your your blood sugars is um, you're going to get a nice big spike and give yourself a nice bit of energy, feel good while you're on the way to work, and then lightness by the time you even get to work or an hour later, you get that that I'm tired feeling. Um, especially if this is done consistently, because actually what I've found is if it's a one off, it, it doesn't really matter. But if it's a habit habits i'm pointing at the screen for anyone with the audio habits if it's a habit the more than that the more that that happens the more that those spike spike crashes happen of, of energy so um then it goes into i'm not actually hungry at, at um uh, nine ten o'clock because i had breakfast at eight o'clock and it was four five hundred calories worth of breakfast because it's it's calorie dense so i'm eating because i'm then need the energy or feel like I need the energy and therein therein creates the habit and then that that happens um, through the day so I think um, poor food choices or poor nutrient choices is 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 uh, something that I think that's one of the things yeah. I, think. I would say uh, my favorite word ever is lack of protein lack of protein was that sorry I get your protein Get your oh, protein. Whisper. Get, get, get your protein. Yeah. Whisper it to the people. It's just one of those things. It's like we all know and, and scientifically across the board, it is harder to break down protein than most other nutrients. Obviously, fiber being in there just passes through, but it takes a long time. So the, it, the satiety levels are quite high. 
Um, it keeps you fuller for longer. Therefore, it'll leave less room for you to they make a bad choice because you don't get the appointment day where you're like, oh, do you know what? I am, my stomach is empty. Like the, the biggest thing that I notice in change when I get people to change, their, you know, after, once I start eventually getting them to get on their protein, is they're like, oh, I don't know how I can eat it all in a day. I don't know how I'll be able to fit all my protein in one day. And you're like, exactly. It's, you know, I'm doing this for a purpose. A, for to feed your body and help with recovery. But B, also the try and curb that feeling where you're empty and you want to just reach for something and snack. Protein will often just keep you full up for longer because it takes so long to break down and feed into the body. Can I, can I start with the... Um, no. Because I really want to make this point. I think... Um, Sometimes when people try new things, so you've got your the suggestion of, of eating more protein, which is which is of course a very good one. Um, but how many times have, have I have we heard have I heard the, someone say to me, "Well, I tried that and it didn't really work. I was still hungry." But how long did you try it for? You know, if you try it for a day, a day, it's it's going to do nothing. It's not going to change in a day. Yeah. Um, so it goes back to being consistent creating these habits that we've talked about one of the you know the best one i I think is 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 the preparation because then you're much less much less likely to you know not eat that protein in the morning and lunch and dinner time because you've got that meal prepared you bought the food so you don't want to waste it for one and you've prepared the meals are in the fridge it's just a case of doing that another thing (laughs) saves you so much money so much i remember i worked out what my lunches cost for a week so over yeah. the five days, it costs seven pounds fifty to make five substantial lunches. Yeah, and you, you know, probably spend seven pounds fifty every day. Yeah, it's people spend seven pounds fifty every day, yeah. closer to a tenner on lunch. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's if we're being. You know, what if they go out for lunch yeah. and have a sit down lunch? That's twenty quid. You know, it's. Yeah, I'm. It, I'm actually hoping that lockdown is doing this to people where they actually sit there and be like, "Holy shit, I've actually got so much money in my bank account." You know, the people are actually working, or even the people who are on eighty percent. People are furloughed, furloughed, man. Sat there and being like, yeah. "Holy shit, I've got so much money because I'm not going out and buying stuff. I'm not buying lunches every day. I'm actually cooking the meals in my house. I guarantee there's going to be a lot of people who are like light bulb moments going off, Oops. and they, and they start they actually think, you know, it's yeah, eating out and all that's lovely, but it's just not necessary all the time. Yeah. Yeah. A million percent. And George, you touched on it then with people that start a habit and then you can't just do it for one day. And I think I made this point, not last week, week before, I didn't know, but it's one thing that I had always overlooked with habits and it's always in the reading for it until I read this book where it's like, how long does it take to create a habit when mm-hmm. it's completely irrelevant? The time doesn't matter one bit. It's all about the number of repetitions of doing the habit. Yeah. It literally doesn't matter how long it takes six weeks. If you do it once over six weeks, that's not a habit. Yeah. Probably take six yeah. years at that rate. E- yeah, exactly. So it's about the number of times, the number of reps you put in. So I meant a number of times then. Well, that who knows? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think I the truth, I think the truth is, is, is that like, there's no number, there's no like oh, 30 days of you because if I, you do this, then it'll be a lifetime habit. Nope, no, it's number. It's like it's the same with getting stronger. You have to do yeah. certain, you have to do reps, reps, reps over time, over time. One sec, keep going. Mm. Yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely agree with that because people don't give anything a, a lengthy enough amount of time for it to work. But when we touched on the eating the, the Friday um, Friday pizza, having the afternoon coffees, that happens. That happens all the time. Yeah, it happens so yeah. often that it's so easy for somebody to create that habit. You know, yeah. eating new sweets and changing your breakfast. You saw, you know, like like we we touched on before. Nobody, nobody in England. Well, there's probably somebody like, but I'm just going to just my, nobody in England, right? That's what we're going to stick me. Started off life by not eating breakfast. Yeah. Everybody was forced to eat breakfast. I'm going to go with school. I'm going to go with everybody as well. You go to school, you have to have your breakfast. All the way through school, everybody's eating breakfast. And then all of a sudden, you get people who say, I don't really like breakfast or I just can't eat in the morning. I just just don't know what it is, but it just makes me feel sick. Well, how the hell did that happen? 
How does because, it make sense? Because they because they stay <laughs> up late, because they drink a lot, because they create all these habits where they don't leave any time. They don't leave any time for long enough that they go and eat their, their meals at 10 o'clock. And they're like, oh, my God, I like uh, eating at 10 so o'clock, but the, eating at 6 o'clock uh, feels so, weird. So the truth is... Enjoy that little sip. Is, they have got up 20 minutes before they have to leave. Yeah. And... That obviously they done it consistently, no? Yeah, done it consistently. I know, I guarantee if you were there, like, oh, I know you're late, but here's your breakfast. They'd be like, oh, amazing, let's go. Oh, 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 that was so good, you know. Habit stays there, exactly. But no, fact, no, like, no. oh my god, I think another way to reinforce the whole you need to do it consistently before you see a change thing is obviously when I was drinking eight coffees a day, what, what did it affect my sleep? Obviously, so I wasn't sleeping very well. Um, yeah, well, that's strange. Um, so when the first day I didn't have coffee, it's not like I didn't have coffee that day and then I slept through the night immediately. It's not like I, I created the habit of not sleeping or, or, or of waking up every few hours. Mm, you probably so, woke up thinking about coffee. Yeah, I probably did, sweating, you know. And then, <laughs> and then after a week or two, all of a sudden one day I woke up and I was like, oh, I didn't wake up at all then. So it took me, I think, a good two weeks. I hope, I hope you wake up at some point. Not right. waking up at all means you're dead. Yeah, in the night, I should, I should have phrased that. Hopefully, yeah. the people know what I meant. You know, I mean, I'm here they now. Don't. Aren't I? They don't. They don't. I think that's a bit insulting, Simon. To be honest. Sorry about him. I don't. You don't. Well, no one knows what I mean, really. But that's my, my point is it took me two weeks mm. for the habit I created to have a positive effect on yeah. my sleep. But so, it was all negative up until that point, probably. It was completely, yeah. Completely. It was still all my whole life up until that point. <laughs> 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 um. So yeah, so if you if you if you're the, if you're that person who gets to eleven o'clock and thinks, man, I need that, I need that uh, pick me up, uh, for whatever reason, that's not gonna you know that that feeling of deep hunger and deep um, yeah. energy lo that lo of low energy is not gonna change in the no. first two days you do it. It might not even change in the first three weeks. Three weeks you do it. It's gonna, it might take even longer depending on um, individual circumstances. So you you gotta be consistent and consistency creates habits like remember to always go back to the why I always go back to the why exactly why did i have it then yeah why did why am i doing that you know yeah. i seen a great thing the other day this is just random but it was um a nutritional thing where they were people it was like a little like infographic where people are like oh you know i'm um i've run out of energy so i need uh and it would give you like a selection it was like caffeine sugar you know treats uh vegetables uh, well vegetables Co cocaine and, and protein and stuff and it was like what actually what people think is like i need caffeine i need sugar and what the truth is you need to eat healthy food yeah and start your lifestyle out because you know you shouldn't be sat down needing coffee all the time and needing pick-me-ups all the time you need to be figuring out what the hell is causing all this yeah why am i feeling so shit all the time caffeine's not needed caffeine should be there as like an exciting boost like oh my yeah. god this is so good that's another thing like I, I i can actually feel the effect from coffee when i have the yeah. odd one now whereas before it was just like i'm just drinking hot black juice yeah <laughs> just probably kept you warm yeah yeah, yeah that's what it was and invisible invisibly yeah. black yeah so I just, yeah, now I'm feeling the, oh, that nice pick me up from coffee. But what else is like, what are the things that people are going to have to go through? What's the negative things people are going to have to go through when they have to stop a habit that they really enjoy? Well, I think we've touched on it. I think that they're going to get to those points um, in the day, going to the office worker again. They're going to get to those points in the day and they, they, um, they're going to have to fight against that real urge to want to have something that they really, really like. And in an office environment, unfortunately, they're going to look around themselves and they're going to see biscuits. They're going to see uh, cheese Tuesdays where loads of people are eating cheese at the cheese board, you know, real so thing, upset, real thing, by the way. And the person who's listening will know it's a real thing. Um, Cause he's talking about it. Um, and, you know, just, just that, you know, that two or three weeks of, you know, that's also a social thing going on just there. So you might feel yeah. a bit left out from that you know but these are the things that um um you're going to come across that nighttime drink that you have wine that you have you might have that with your other half it might be a nice little um little thing that you do together so so like jack said finding something that um 
replaces that. So uh, the social aspect's not not gone, um, but the habit has changed. Is is something that I think um, um, people need to think about. That's, that's me. I'll, I'll um I'll flip it and say you don't have yeah. to make it hard and annoying and a bad experience. I think if you have a bad habit and you want to stop it, make it satisfying when you don't do that habit. So give yourself a reward. Or if you want to create a new habit, give yourself a reward for when you do do the habit. So we touched on it at the very beginning. When you have that donut, that's the bad habit, you get a nice little buzz because it tastes good. Use that theory, that little bit of science to be like, okay, <laughs> I want to create a new habit. Or I want to stop a new habit. When you don't do the habit, Give yourself a little reward so yeah. whatever that is i can't speak I'll, give for you, I'll, I'll give you a good example of, of my reward i gave myself and why is all my stuff coffee related as well in the in um a couple of years uh, a year and a half ago i did my books and i figured out i was spending 400 pound a year on coffee um from <laughs> from, from um what's your coffee shop. order well i just get two pound fifty coffee a day you know and then from the costa around the corner well, that's your first mistake. Costa, yeah, first. Well, well, I think, no, no it's, sorry, it's, big box, it's like. Nero, it's Nero, you know, and, and I, and I <laughs> still. No print filters like 40 man pit. <laughs> what? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. This is the point I'm making. Yeah. So my reward there was that I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend that money on the coffee and equally, I'm not just going to not spend the money. I'm actually going to put that money away. Mm -hmm. So buy, buy jujitsu, geese and. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm trying my hardest <laughs> not to mention it. I've been told once or twice by more than one person that I talk about it just a little bit too much, just a tiny bit too much. So I'm trying my hardest not. So I just want to put the record out there that it wasn't me that brought that up. Yeah, um, but the point is, is I say 400 pound the yeah. next year. There's a positive. Uh, there's a positive that that's yeah, right. that, well, the older people is positive as well as they're going to you know, make change to their lifestyle. They're going to feel better. They're going to look better and everything else. So it's trying to recognize those rewards. And sometimes it's not, it's harder to see early on, but it will it will come. Yeah, will come. I think when we go back to habits, is that um, the biggest thing here is that you can never if if and I'm I'm really I'm just speaking about weight loss here. You can never return to your old habits because your old habits will always lead you down the path in which you wanted to lose that weight in the first place. Yes, definitely. it will always return you there. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to do a diet for twelve weeks and then I'm just going to go back to how. How you, how you were before is, or what you did before is going to make you that exact person again, if yeah. not worse. So really when it comes to um, changing your lifestyle and changing um, your diet and everything else, that has to, you have to be thinking about making that a habit and you have to be thinking about making that long term because without those thoughts in your mind, then you will always be chasing the weight loss, trying to figure a new diet. That's why there's 4,000 diets out there. Yeah. There's just people just being out there like, oh, we'll create a new fancy system that makes it sound really easy to people, even though it's not. Yeah. And they're always I think, like... I think that's oh. a key point, mate. I definitely... The, 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 you know, whether you decide to do a, a, a blitz on a diet where you go super low on calories and output is super high so you can provoke the fastest weight loss response or whether you do it slow and steadily changing habit by habit by habit at some point you're going to need to do something slow and steady whether it's on the way down changing those habits as you drop your um your body your weight or when you've hit a target very very quickly and like you said when you come back up if you just revert back to habit you're going to go back up in weight at that point, then you have to try and lay new habits. And, you know, I don't think there's one way that's better than the other. I don't know if you guys agree with that. I think it just works for each individual. Yeah. yeah I think we touched on it. I don't find the system that works best for you. Like with all these things, it's all individual and what's optimal for everyone will be different, but find a system that works well for you to stop or create a new habit. And then don't wait till Monday to start it. Be like, oh, we'll start Monday. Just do it straight away. Yeah. When it's in your mind, when it, when, yeah. Yeah, and I think we, we, we do often go back to, to weight loss, but I think it's a, t a subject that comes up uh, that, that's, um, that we're asked about more than anything else, isn't it? So I think it relates, yeah. quite, it relates quite well to it. So, um, yeah, cool. Guys, guys, is there anything else? Is there anything that we've missed? 
Um, I'd just like to bring back the whole myth or fact. Well, it's myth or fact thing that I was doing a few few podcasts years ago, ago. quite a while ago now. Um, um, last week. I brought I brought it up on the um on one of my videos on YouTube in the last week. Um oh just because you're a YouTube star and <laughs> uh, plug. Plug, 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 yeah, plug. 50, eh? 50 subscribers, so, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> um, so I mentioned um, weight loss in, in this video and uh, the loss of muscle. We've talked about this a lot. But the question for you guys is, we've heard people say that if you lose too much muscle, it can dam damage your metabolism, therefore damage the rate in which you can burn calories. Do you think that's correct that can that happen or is that a temporary thing that happens while you've lost weight because i've been asked this which is why i'm asking you guys if you lose too much muscle it can happen but if you just stop moving that's what's going to change okay uh, so if your metabolism is the sum of all reactions in the body that are the total sum of every chemical reaction in the body so what is a chemical reaction? When you move, you've got to create energy. Therefore, you're creating chemical reactions that are boosting your metabolism. So the dominant things that happen when people lose too much weight is that usually they're in a very, 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 very big calorie deficit if you've lost too much weight. That's a, I'm emphasizing the too much there. When you've lost loads and loads of weight, and then over time, if you're in such a massive calorie deficit, naturally your body will start to auto-regulate your energy output and it will start to slow you down. It will make you lethargic. It will make you want to not go and do more movement naturally. And it's doing that because it's trying to preserve energy. So if you're not moving, then guess what? Your metabolic rate is going to drop. Therefore, you're going to have a, a slower metabolism. But if you want to reverse that, you go back to the movement again. Okay, so it's, it's more of a case of it down regulates rather than it's actually caused any damage. Yeah. I, I, no, do you know what? I actually listened to a really good, really good podcast and I had Phil Lerney in it and I had a guy, an Irish guy in there as well, which I'm sorry, I can't remember his name because obviously he's going to be my mate. I mean, like I came from that <laughs> one country and that one nation, one people. Um, Careful with but all that. But he was basically... <laughs> <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Um, but what, what it, it was basically reverse diet. That's what they were talking about. So you yeah. know this whole reverse diet. And as in like, what it is, is you diet hard, you get lean, let's say you're a bodybuilder, you get really lean and you get to where you want to be. And then you slowly start to bring up your carbohydrates and your calories again, slowly but surely. They keep your metabolism fast and blah, 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 blah. And he basically just came out with the truth, which is it's all a load of bullshit. Okay. He said, in fact, the best way to actually reverse diet and get yourself back up and get yourself feeling better so you're burning more energy. Because remember, when you're in such a calorie deficit, you're not moving so much and you don't want to move so much. So you need to get the energy in there to make you move more is to rampantly put your calories back up the baseline. Yeah. Um, there's no other way about it. It's the fastest way to get your body back to homeostasis and everything to run a lot better. Your hormones be uh, better. Your metabolic rate will be better because you're now feeling better, so you're moving more. Yeah. So you um, you go back to your your, your baseline. Your yeah. output goes up anyway, so your metabolism yeah. goes up. Okay. That's it. That's what. Yeah. Instead of like the slowly, surely, catchy monkey sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. I suppose knowing what 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 that baseline is, but that's a different conversation. Yeah. 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 Jack, anything to add to that? Uh, no, I've got to go. Yeah, um, we're done. We're done. <laughs> we are done now anyway. So um, that's perfect timing. Um, okay, so next next week, everyone, before we go, we've got a guest on. Becky from Stands of Fitness is coming to join us to have a have a chat. So we'll see you all next week. Thank you, gents. Is it same time? Same, same time if you're happy. Yeah. Oh, and this is on YouTube, right? Uh, it will be on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's on Spotify as well, no? Spotify. It's yeah. on. It's on um, Apple. Podcast? Yeah, Apple podcast. Like yeah. the little purple icon with the little yeah, like white little circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's the one. What's it called? 161st out of a couple of thousand. Out of 162? Yeah, our 162 nice. ranked. We're ranked. Is it anywhere else? Uh, I don't, it's not on Google yet, but I'm working on it. Can, can catch it on um, some Instagram, some clips. 
some clips on Instagram, yeah. Fitness Real talk weather. Podcast. Instagram's a big place. I don't know what it is. Fitness, fitness Talk Podcast. Oh. Fitness on Facebook? Podcast. Yeah. Um, Facebook, uh, well, my page, George, your yeah. coaching, yeah. you know. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> is, this, is this a subtle way of saying that this is what I should do every at the end no. of the, the, the video? No, I, purely for my own... Just so he can find <laughs> where he is. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to know. Anyway, I've got to go. Okay, yeah. bye, <laughs> bye, bye. Right, see you later, guys. Have a good one. And you.